Welcome to our 7th Mathematics tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll go over inputting data points and using the interpolating polynomial and interpolation functions. By using the interpolating polynomial function, we'll be able to look at linear, quadratic, and cubic splines. Then, we'll take a look at how we can use the epilogue function in order to help us see our data points in plots. The easiest way to enter a relatively small set of data is in a matrix. Here, I'll grab an example from the online notes. We'll need to switch these parentheses with curly brackets so we can go ahead and copy and paste it into Microsoft Word. Replace all. And now the other side of the curly bracket. And replace all. Now we can copy and paste this into Mathematica. Close it off so that it becomes a matrix, and we'll input it into the variable data. Let's also put a semicolon here so we can suppress the output. Now I'll shift enter to initiate that. If we wanted to remove any data points, say for example the third data point, we could do so using the delete function. So let's set data 1 equal to delete data and the third data point. Shift enter. And now we have that same matrix without that third entry. All right, now that we have the data, let's take a look at the two interpolating functions we can use. The first one we'll take a look at is the interpolating polynomial function. As we know from class, for every set of n plus one data points, we can find a unique nth degree polynomial. This is the polynomial that the interpolating polynomial function finds for us. So that syntax is interpolating polynomial. Your vector containing the data and the variable that you want the data to be with respect to. So we can use this function and store it in a variable y. So let's say y is equal to the interpolating polynomial of the data with respect to x. Shift enter. And here we have our long simplified interpolating polynomial. If we wanted to see the coefficients of the polynomial, we could use the expand function. So let's go ahead and expand y, shift enter, I'll scroll down, and here we can see all of our coefficients. And since we had 11 data points, we have a 10th degree polynomial. And if we wanted to evaluate the expression at any value of x, we could just use a rule. So let's say evaluate y when x is equal to 0.5. Shift enter, and we get a value. Now let's take a look at the interpolation function. The main difference between the interpolation function and the interpolating polynomial is that rather than creating a polynomial of degree n, for n plus 1 data points, the interpolation function creates piecewise splines of a certain degree in order to interpolate the data. So these splines are the linear, quadratic, and cubic splines that I mentioned earlier. And the syntax for the interpolation function is the data set 
the method, which in this case will always use the splines, and the interpolation order, and just whatever degree you want to interpolate. So if we wanted to make constant, linear, quadratic, or cubic splines, we would just use the interpolation function. So for a zero degree or a constant interpolation, it would be interpolation, the data, and then interpolation order, zero. For the constant interpolation, we don't need to define a method because there's only one method for constant interpolation. For the others, however, we do need to define a method. So to save some time, I'll copy and paste this and just make modifications. So our first degree, we need the method spline. and the interpolation order one. For the second degree, just change the interpolation order to two. And for the cubic splines, just change the interpolation order to three. Now shift enter. And as we can see, the interpolation function doesn't actually give us a polynomial as an output because it creates a piecewise function. This also means that we can't use a rule to evaluate the functions. Instead, we need to use square brackets. So let's try and evaluate them all at 0.5. Once again, I'll copy and paste this to save some time. Right, now shift enter, and we get each of our values. And we notice that they're all slightly different depending on the interpolation order. Now we know how to interpolate a set of data points using an interpolating polynomial as well as piecewise interpolation. The next part of the tutorial, we'll take a look at plotting using the upload function.